Raman, we're here. Everything's been arranged. Someone will bring the village keepers back to Aru village shortly. I guess all I can say now is, thanks for agreeing to help. Ah, don't mention it. I think we can both agree you went to hell and back for it. But we share a common cause now. From here on out, we're allies. Where are the perpetrators? I'll bring you to them. Follow me. So these are the people who kidnapped the village keepers. Oh no, it's the scribe! There's no need to yell. No one can help you now. We've been all over the desert trying to find you! That's right. General Mahamatra? No, no! Make it quick, please! Swift and painless! Whoa! The moment they set eyes on Sino, they turn pale like they've seen a ghost! You should have known that I would be coming for you. Wait, we were just following orders! You know what I'm talking about, right? There's no way we could have done all this by ourselves! No, not Sino! He's gonna tear us limb from limb! I could do worse. Please have mercy! Start talking. Otherwise, I'll have to resort to other methods. So, your superiors have kept you quite busy recently. Why? What are they trying to accomplish? Uh, they, um, wanted to extract canned knowledge. Don't play dumb. You know what I'm really asking. They extract divine canned knowledge. Then what? I, I... I really don't know how to explain it. Well, you better start talking or you'll be sorry! You don't want to make things any more difficult for yourself, do ya? Be my guest. Huh? Huh? Uh-huh. That sure didn't sound like a fancy metaphor or anything. You're serious, aren't you? How did you know? There's no use hiding it now. Yes, you're right. The Academia is working on an important and potentially world-changing project. They are creating a new god. A god that will belong to them and to the people of Sumeru. It may seem as if Sumeru's academics are thriving, but ever since the death of Greater Lord Rukadevata, scholarly breakthroughs have been few and far between. The withering of Soul has been getting worse recently. The sages have tried everything they could think of, but nothing's worked. I'm always hearing them say things like, if only Greater Lord Rukadevata was still with us. Continue. And then, someone from the Fatui showed up. They called him the Doctor. He brought a, a, a gnosis and said he wanted to borrow the Academia's research facilities. The doctor was previously expelled from the Academia. At first, the sages looked down at him in disdain. But when he said those words, everyone's expression changed. He asked them, do you wish to create a god? This is what the arrogant ignorance at the extreme end of Academia looks like. First... The Academia spent a long time constructing a divine vessel, which was based on an exquisite humanoid puppet. After that, they harvested dreams via the Seb Zerus Festival Samsara, maximizing the Akasha's output. With the Doctor's help, and the Akasha now functioning at maximum efficiency, they were able to use it to extract the power from the Gnosis and convert it into a divine core. 
Next, they decided that their new god needed to possess divine wisdom. For that to happen, they needed a huge quantity of divine canned knowledge. It adds up. But how do you determine whether the knowledge extracted is of divine origin? Call it an educated guess? The Academia has been trying to figure out the exact source of the Scholar's Madness for centuries, but to no avail. Nobody can explain the cause of this phenomenon. Uh, surely you can see what that implies, Scribe al -Haytham. If it's knowledge no mortal can comprehend, then it must be something only gods are able to decipher. In other words, it's the source of the God of Wisdom's omniscience and omnipotence. Hmm... You must have noticed by now. The Academia doesn't care about who their god is. It's the ability to exercise control over knowledge and wisdom that matters. It is as if they are cursed with a desire for omniscience and omnipotence that burns in their blood. Some organisms demonstrate phototaxis, and thus orient their entire lives in respect to sources of light. For the sages, their only source of hope is the existence of a deity who embodies the acme of wisdom. This is but a form of phototaxis. For many scholars, the absence of a god of wisdom means stumbling in the darkness for the duration of their lives. Then what does Lesser Lord Kusanali mean to you? Is she not a true god present in this world? If you already have a new god, why try to create another one? From the beginning, the Academia has never treated her as a god. When the Academia first discovered Lesser Lord Kusanali, the newborn god of wisdom, the sages hoped that she would be as wise as Greater Lord Ruka Devada. But upon evaluation, they found that at the time she possessed no more intelligence than any ordinary human child. The sages never had a ruder awakening. This forced them to accept that Greater Lord Ruka Devada had indeed passed away. Not to mention that Lesser Lord Kusanali's Gnosis had been used to power the Akasha this entire time. By herself, she has neither an Archon's raw power, nor the spectacular insight expected of a god of wisdom. Slowly but surely, people began to forget about her existence. So... This is the path the sages have chosen. Alright, let's try to keep our cool. If everyone's in a bad mood, then let's change up our scenery. Raman, give me a few men to help us escort the village keepers back to the village. And these two scholars, they're coming too. Sure. As you wish. The village keepers you found have all been returned to their homes, and each one has a dedicated caregiver to look after them. The two new scholars are being kept under close supervision, too. <laughs> really great work, everyone. Uh, the atmosphere is so heavy. Stop spacing out! Come on, is there nothing left to talk about? In that case, let's all get some water and try to think about something else. Or I can go fetch some snacks. Oh, Paimon's so coming with you! Do you have any plans, Traveler? Gods above, you're not talking about work, are you? Hmm. So you were still withholding some information?
though we lived through all of this firsthand, it still feels super surreal to hear you talk about it again. What a whirlwind of a story. I felt like I was holding my breath the whole time. It seems like there will be more issues to face in the days ahead than I had anticipated. Hmm. Still, now's a good time to make our next move. Now that Raman's joined us, we'll be an even stronger team. It's time to make a plan. Indeed. These events are a flagrant transgression of the rules in every sense. We cannot allow it to continue. So, everyone, are we on the same page? Crush the sages and rescue our god. That is our ultimate goal. Well, let's brainstorm a little more about what other resources we can draw on. The next time we gather here, we must have a solid plan. Yep, it'll work out for sure. Everyone is already waiting inside. Well, what are we waiting for? Let's join them! Please, wait a moment. Before attending the meeting, I hope you can promise me one thing. What do you need? Promise me that you won't commit to anything too reckless. Hmm, what do you think? Okay.
Everyone's here so early! But why isn't anybody talking? We already discussed things a bit. Hey, where have you been? I've missed you two. Are you ready? Very well. Are you sure this is gonna work? I gotta admit, it's bold. Color me impressed. Hmm. It's worth a try. The point of discussion is to arrive at a solution. Let's cut the small talk and move to the next point. Uh, you're making Paimon nervous. You're finally done. I have some other stuff to take care of. Catch you all later. Come on, don't give me that face. I know what you're going to say. I'll be careful. That's what I wanted to hear. Take care. Well, Traveler, Paimon, judging from your expressions, the meeting must have been quite productive. You can tell? I'm not that good at scheming a strategy, but I can sense people's emotions. And based on your reaction, things must have gone quite well. Uh, Paimon's a little worried. Hopefully nothing will go wrong. To be honest, I feel the same. But you're already some of the most capable people I know. So you have my trust. Your deeds speak for themselves. Candice, we stayed behind to tell you that, although you won't be coming with us, we'll be sure to remember your words. I'm very glad to hear that. I've said the same thing to everyone here today as I said to you when you arrived. Your safety is the most important thing. Only when you're saved can the plan be successful. So please, take care. You're welcome. And thank you for taking my advice. Good luck. With everything. I'll be here in the village praying for you. Hmm, sounds good. I'll go make some preparations. Okay. I'll hate them! Have you finished saying your goodbyes? Yeah! Also, Candace told everyone to be careful. Yes, she did. But I think my point also bears repeating. Our plan is not child's play. We won't be able to achieve anything if we're simply careful. We must go beyond that and fully commit ourselves to it. I hope this is clear to you. Huh? Shouldn't you be saying something more cheerful to boost our morale right now? Didn't we already do that during the meeting? You can never have enough words of encouragement. In that case, Candace can cuddle you to your heart's content while I continue to remind you of the seriousness of our situation. We all have our jobs to do, after all. It's like how some people can be put in charge of logistics while others will fight on the front lines. Hmm. Speaking of the front lines,
front lines? You don't look anything like a soldier. Of course. Compared to the mercenaries, I'm merely a feeble scholar. But the advantage of not being a mercenary is that I get to stay in a safer place and offer my strategic insight. Just think about that mercenary who lost his mind. Mercenary groups are facing constant danger every single day. Well, being a scholar is also a high-risk occupation, and you are a scholar! I'm not like the rest of them. Even among members of the same species, some will exhibit far more potential than others. This guy... <sighs> Paimon still remembers when those mercenaries in Port Ormos called you a lunatic! <laughs> All intellectuals are lunatics in the eyes of fools. I'll take that as a compliment. Hmm... That reminds me... Do you remember the record we saw in the King Deshret ruins? It mentioned forbidden knowledge. You have a good memory. Forbidden knowledge has the power to drive people insane, but this fact has never been shared with the public. Even I, who has worked in the academia for some time, was never once informed of this. I think... Those mad scholars and mercenaries we encountered may have all fallen victim to the corrupting qualities of forbidden knowledge. But the academia has always held a different view. They have always believed that symptoms of madness are a side effect of human contact with divine knowledge as mere mortals. Come to think of it, perhaps the academia has also never understood the true nature of forbidden knowledge and thus always approached the issue from the wrong direction. The Withering, Elazar, and the sandstorms. Don't you think what is happening right now across Sumeru is rather similar to the forbidden knowledge pollution that occurred in the desert thousands of years ago? But Paimon thought that Ermansoul's disease is what caused the withering in the sandstorms. At least, that's what Tainari told us. Wait a second. Could it be that... Ah, you've connected the dots. The cause of Ermansoul's illness may precisely be the pollution from forbidden knowledge. But if that's the case, what should we do? This is huge! Wait. Why do you think Lesser Lord Kusanali would have a solution to this situation? You mean, it's related to the scene you saw when you passed out in the Avidia Forest? That whole... The world forget me thing? Hmm. In that case, it's imperative that we rescue Lesser Lord Kusanali. Only by working with her to save Ermansoul can we completely resolve the problem Sumeru currently faces. To make sure we're still on track, I would like to check on the state of some of our preparatory work. To an Aramite base. Whatever the boss says. Oh, you made it. Huh? What are they doing here? I gave them some technical work to do. Ah, it's the scribe. And is that the traveler I see? How's the work going? Ah, yes. We have fixed the devices according to your instructions. One of them is already ready for use, while the others are still under repair. Aren't those devices for can knowledge extraction? What are you doing with those? 
Look here. Huh? M more kid knowledge? Are you going to put more weird stuff into his head again? What's that look on your face? Are you scared? Paimon's a little scared, but very, very furious! Hmm. <laughs> That's an interesting response. Anyway, we're not going to use this just yet. As I mentioned during the meeting, this knowledge capsule contains a decree I drew up in the past. The Academia should also have their own copy. And according to the plan we just came up with... Traveler, I want you to record something into this capsule. Do you believe we can save Lesser Lord Kusanali? Good. Conviction is the most important part of all of this. Now, please get ready and put on this device. You want us to record our conviction into the knowledge capsule? Yes. Uh, Paimon is still really worried. I understand, but trust me, Paimon, this is something we have to do. It's best if you can do as I say. Because, to achieve this impossible task, it sounds like you'll need to fool your own heart first. Although it may feel like a trick, self-encouragement may be the most important tool we have. Hmm. Paimon can see the point you're trying to make. Imagine this. We have orchestrated our plan and successfully rescued Lesser Lord Kusanali. As a result, we have changed Sumeru's entire political landscape. Everything went without a hitch, and everyone recognizes and praises our achievements. Now, open your eyes. Here. What's this? Read it out loud. It's done. Is your head okay? Does anything hurt? It's just a recording. There should be no negative effects. But what was the point of doing this? Ugh, Paimon doesn't get it. And that's perfectly fine. In any case, these capsules aren't meant to be used by you. Huh? What do you mean? Have you forgotten? Our plan needs to account for those who have long relied on the Akasha. You may find it hard to believe, but for those people, everything the Akasha transmits to them is nothing short of absolute truth. Imagine if you've been using a device like the Akasha since the day you were born, and this device has always supported you during times of need. After all that time, what do you think you'd become? Uh... A fool? A machine? A slave to orders. And that's why rules are so important. In addition, those who understand the rules can delineate boundaries and identify gray areas. Hmm. But why would you need to identify the gray areas? You could say that those kinds of ambiguous zones can be very... interesting. One might even say they're advantageous in the right hands. Things you're interested in are really out there. Are all Sumeru scholars like this? Anyway, that's enough chit-chat. I'm going to take those two to work on some small projects. You can head to Caravan Rebot and start preparing for the next step. Small projects? We're going to tinker with the Akasha Terminal and make a few... Modifications. <laughs>